Uh, welcome to topic two of labor economics. Uh, in the previous session, we looked at the introduction of labor economics, whereby we said that uh, labor economics is the branch of economics which studies the behavior of employers and employees in the market, uh, focusing on salary, wage, employee welfare, working condition, etc. We went ahead to look at some of the key components of labor economics whereby we looked at uh, the labor demand, the labor supply, and then unemployment as some of the key components of labor economics. We also went ahead to look at uh, some of the actors or participants in the labor market, whereby we looked at the employer. Uh, we explained it to be an organization we work for or we represent. Then we also looked at employee or the worker, people like you who work in the organization, and we finally also looked at the government agents as an actor in the labor market. So today I want us to look at labor demand as our topic two. Labor demand refers to the quantity of labor that firms or employers are willing and able to hire at different wage levels. It is influenced by factors such as economic conditions, technological advancements and the production needs of a business. So the labor demand can be influenced by economic conditions in such a way that uh, when the, the consumers, they don't have the purchasing power to, to buy products, means the firms will not hire more workers. Where will they get the money from if the customers are not having the income to buy uh, the product or services? So that's how economic conditions affect uh, the demand for, for labor. Then when you look at uh, technological advancement, for example, the deployment of robots in the production sector, one robot can do a work of more than 100 uh, people. So if you have one or two robots in the organization, then there's no need for you to have more than uh, 50 workers. That one robot can do the work. So it means that the demand for the labor can be influenced by advancement in technology. So basically that is the introduction to the labor demand as far as labor economics is concerned. <clears throat> now let us look at the factors influencing labor demand. One is the economic condition which you have already looked at. For example, uh, the economic growth. The economic growth can be determined by the level of unemployment or level of employment. It can also be determined by the level of investment. So in a country where the investment level is low, it means the economy is not doing well and therefore the demand for labor will definitely be low. So that is the economic condition. Another explanation of economic condition can be the business cycle. How, how long will the business be in existence? Because we have seen some organizations operating for only two, three years, and then from there they, they, they collapsed. So with such kind of situation, the demand for labor will always be very, very low. So if the, the organizational life cycle is more than 10 or 15 years, then the demand for labor will always be there. So that is how economic conditions affect uh, the demand for labor. The next one is the industry specific factors. It also affects the demand for labor. So industry with expanding markets or changing consumer preferences may experience higher labor demand. For example, if the consumers are changing their uh, preference, it means you need to get people who are going to work on that particular product which is preferred by the consumer. For example, if we, we are operating as a manufacturing company whereby we only produce sugar, then the consumer test for sugar is changing. Okay, uh, We might be tempted to introduce another uh, product in the organization. From sugar, maybe you can try uh, to produce maybe salt. Now, if you're planning to open that branch of producing salt, it means you need more workers in order to, for the production sector to be very efficient. It means the number of workers are going to be increased and therefore the demand for labor will definitely increase. So that is how industry specific factors are, are affect the demand for labor, especially when there is a change in consumers' preference. Uh, the next one is the government policies now. Government policies related to taxation affect uh, labor demand. 
For example, if the government is imposing high taxes on the companies, it, it means they, they will not have that financial strength to hire more workers because the money they get, uh, they give back to the government in terms of tax. So high tax can mean a low demand for, for workers because the, the organization will not have enough money to, to take care of the employees. Another explanation under government policy is the regulations about the registration and operation of the companies. If the regulation is very bureaucratic, the process is not easy. It means most investors will be discouraged from registering their companies. And what happens is that when the investors are not registering companies, there is no job. Jobs are created by investors. When they, they invest their money or when they invest, they operate businesses, it means they're going to employ people. Therefore, the demand for labor will come. But if the government policy is very bureaucratic, which does not allow investors to, 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 to register businesses or organizations, then the community is going to suffer. They will not have a job. So that is how government policies and regulation affect the demand for labor. The next one now is we're going to look at the wage rates and the labor demand. Wage or salary and the, the demand for labor. So wage rates have a significant impact on labor demand. High wage increases the cost of labor for farms, leading to reduced labor demand. So if the cost of labor is very high, it means the organization will not have many workers. Why would you hire more than 10 people who are earning above $10,000, for example? Where will you get the money from? So, where the cost is high, definitely the demand for labor is going to drop. So, as the HR professionals, we need to take care of this uh, uh, wage rate seriously. Otherwise, if you don't look at wage rate as a factor, it will be definitely affect the way how you do your recruitment. People nowadays, are ve they are very sensitive. Whatever, whenever they are applying for a job, the first thing is the remuneration, uh, the compensation package. How is it compared to where he or she is working now? Because one of the reasons now employees are leaving the organization is uh, they're looking for higher what? Higher wage rates. That's where people are leaving the organization. So that is how wage rates can affect uh, labor, demands in a market. The next one now is the technological advancement and the labor demands. I've already explained to you how robots can influence the demand for, for, for labor. One machine can do the work of 100 people. So if you have two machines, that is 200 people. So would you, would you uh, employ 200 people or you just have two machines to do the work? So that technology greatly affect the demand for labor, okay? So automation and robots, advanced technology can replace labor intensive tasks, reducing the demand for certain types of jobs. Uh, this is common in, in advanced countries. People are, they are now using robots to do work instead of uh, humans. So with time, it might come to Africa or even in South Sudan. So you need to get prepared for that. So don't always think of uh, the traditional way of doing things. The technology is changing every day. The next one now is the determinants of labor demand in a different sectors. We're looking at the determinants of labor demand in different sectors. Basically, we have two sectors. One is the manufacturing sector, and then the other one is the service sector, where I reached university. So let us first look at manufacturing sector. How does it affect uh, the demand for labor. Labor demand in manufacturing sector is influenced by changes in production process, international competition, and market demand. Let's begin with the process or change in the process of the production. So if there is a change in the process of production, it means there's going to be need for employees who are going to be uh, doing the production work. But if there's no change, then there's no need to, to hire people because the, the only employees, they already understand the system, how it operates, there's no need to get a, another person. But if there is a change in that system, maybe the machine, uh, so that machine needs an operator. That operator might not be within the organization, so it has to be uh, looked for from outside. So that is the, when 
the organization will advertise for a position so that people can come and they do the work. <clears throat> also, the international competition. Remember, you are not the only person in the, in the, in the industry. We have big companies producing similar uh, product. For example, I can talk of Ruenzori Water. That was the year Ruenzori Water became dominant. In Uganda, not only in Uganda, even in South Sudan. Everywhere you go, Ruenzori Water. So Ruenzori Water became a household name. If you go to the shop, people are just looking for Ruenzori Water. Even the local brands, they call it Ruenzori Water. So that kind of competition from Ruenzori is not easy. And it really determines uh, the demand for, for labor. As an organization, you need to look for people who are more competent enough to produce something similar to Renzori water in order to withstand the competition. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then you can be outcompeted from the industry, then the business will just uh, collapse. The next one is the labor demand, I mean the market demand of the goods or services also de uh, determine the, the level of labor you need in your organization. Where the demand for your goods is high, of course, you need more people to do more production. So where the demand is low, you cannot, you cannot go and hire many employees because the demand for the product is very low. So therefore, customers' demand or the market demand greatly affects uh, the, the demand for labor in an organization. The next one now is the service sector. At first, we're looking at the, the manufacturing sector. Now we are talking about the service sector. This is where Risto University is now. We offer services. We, 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 we don't produce anything. The hospital, they offer what? Services. The hotel, they offer services. The aviation company, they offer services. So labor demand in services is driven by factors such as population growth, consumer preferences, and the need for personal services. So let me talk about the population growth. How, how does it determine the labor? For example, Risto University, if the population of South Sudan has risen maybe from estimated 11 or 12 million to 40 something million, it means the number of people who will need the service of education will increase. And what happens if the increase is that the university add on more manpower to meet the demand? If you are having five or 20,000 students, can we manage them only? We cannot. So it will force us to look for more manpower. So therefore, that growth in population influences the demand for Labor. So basically, that is how labor in the service sector be determined or going through growth in population. Now, let us look at labor demand and business expansion. Labor demand and, and business expansion. Business expansion, such as the opening of new branches or the introduction of new product lines, can increase labor demand. Expansionary factors include increased market demand, company growth, and investment new ventures. For example, if this university is expanding, we need to take a branch in all the 10 states of South Sudan. It means we need labor, we need people, we need employees. You cannot talk of opening up branch in Yambio when we don't have workers, we only here in Juba. It means we need more people, we can recruit them locally from Yambio or even in Juba here and then we take them to Yambio. If you want to open up another branch in Bor, the same. So the more branches Bristol University would like to open, the more employees at the university would also need to recruit. So that is how expansion affects the demand for labor. Unlike organizations which uh, do not believe in expansion, okay? If your organization is not believing in expansion, it means you can also not demand for more labor. Why? Because uh, you are not expanding, no branches have been opened up across the country. No need to add on manpower. So firms may hire additional workers to meet the expanding production needs and the or customer demand. So where the demand is high, of course, we need higher workers. Therefore, by doing that, the demand for labor actually plays. 
The next one we are going to look at now is the labor demand and the business contractions. Business contractions such as economic downturns or changes in market conditions can increase labor demand. If the economy is not doing well, what will happen is that, of course, the labor or the demand for labor will reduce. Some organizations will now start doing what you call downsizing or delaying, removing some uh, employees. When their contract expires, it's not renewed. So that is how the economy is affecting the organization. The organization cannot sustain uh, the wage bill of the workers because of the economic reason. It could be uh, inflation, it could be any other uh, thing related to the economy. So contradictory factors include reduced consumer spending. So reduced consumer spending is, happens when, for example, you have lost your job, of course, definitely your income. You don't have income if you only depend on job. The moment the job is not there, there's no income. It means you're going to be very careful in spending. So therefore, your spending uh, power is reduced. And what happens it is reduced, of course, you cannot buy the product and the organization cannot pay the workers because the organization uses the money spent for buying products or services to pay its workers. So if you're not spending, the organization will not have money to sustain the employees. So basically, that is how the, the, the economic contradictions are demand for, for labor. And now we look at the labor demand and the government policies labor demand and government policies. Government policies can influence labor demand through various means. <clears throat> A first look at the fiscal policy. Changes in taxation, government spending or incentives can impact firms investment decisions and labor demand. So re regulatory policies, labor market regulation such as minimum wage, those ETC affect uh, the demand for labor. So when we talk of the minimum wage, we are talking about a fixed amount of money to be given to an employee. For example, the government can say uh, no one in South Sudan should get below 50,000 SSP. That is the minimum. So the minimum is 50,000 SSP. So that kind of law affects the demand for, for, for the labor. I'm just giving a small figure. What if it is uh, maybe 500,000? SSP that the government is saying no one should get below 500,000 SSP. Well, you get the 500,000 to get even the, the, the Ascari or the cleaner. Yeah. So you need to pay the cleaner 500,000. It means the officers, the managers, and so they will get over 1 million SSP. Do you have that money? You don't have. By doing that, you are going to reduce on the labor. Okay. If you're having 20 employees, you may end up having only five because of the minimum which uh, set by the, by, the, by the government. So the change of taxation, I've talked about taxation. The high tax discourages investors uh, from hiring more employees because they'll be spending more money uh, to the government in terms of uh, tax. Okay, so that is how the government policies affect uh, the demand for labor. The next one now is the labor demand and the future trends. Technological advancement may create new job opportunities while displacing certain types of jobs. Uh, for example, I've explained uh, robots several times. I'm not going to talk of robots now. Let me talk of something new. The new software accounting packages. So if you don't have that skills of accounting packages, then if you're an accountant, you might be kicked out from your office. So what lesson do we learn from here? The lesson we have learned from here is we need to update our skills need further training, need further education, so that when such technology comes, it will get us uh, prepared. So that is how technological advancement affects uh, the demand of labor organization. So adapting to changing labor demand requires investments in education, training, and fostering flexible and adaptive labor market. So that is how uh, demand for labor can be influenced by future trend especially in terms of uh, technology. Now we look at uh, the labor demand and infrastructure investment. Infrastructure investment can stimulate labor demand by creating construction jobs and supporting income growth. 
uh, infrastructure projects such as roads, bridges, airports, etc. If it is being implemented in your area, then there's a lot of opportunities. Okay. For example, if the government of South Sudan is constructing or is, is constructing roads from all the states, tarmac, constructing bridges, they are going to create jobs. The youth are going to get jobs. Because if you want to construct the road from here to, to up to up to Yay, for example, how long will it take? And how many people do you want? That's a lot. So that such kind of development actually creates more jobs to use them, uh, relying basically on the job from the NGOs, etc. So it's high time people think of uh, the infrastructure development, but the question is, do we have the resources for the infrastructure development or we don't? So that is a question not for us to answer. But if you have the answer, it's okay, no problem. So the next one now is the labor demand and the public services. Public services provided by the government, such as health care, education or public safety can influence labor demand. So we have uh, government hospitals. Okay? Here in Juba, we have Juba Teaching Hospital or Juba Referral Hospital. So people who are working there basically are government workers, though uh, the hospital is also supported sometimes by the NGOs. We find two categories of people they are working. One, they are working with the NGOs, but closely supervising or providing services in the hospital. Then we have the government employees also. So where such services are in the community, of course, the demand for labor will come. The hospital needs doctors. The hospital needs uh, the midwifery or the nurses, ETC, and other medical professionals. Not just only medical professionals. We also have supportive staff, support staff, okay, like the admin, uh, the, the acacia, or the, the ascaris, the gateman, ETC. So that is how the public services can provide jobs to the citizen. So expanding or improving public services may require increased labor demand in these sectors. Changes in public policy priorities can drive shifts to or safety in labor demand across public uh, services. <clears throat> now the last slide we are looking at now, the labor demand and the financial factors. Financial conditions include interest rates, access to capital, and investment incentives can impact labor demand. Let me talk of interest rates. If you are an organization which is going to borrow money uh, from the money lenders, the interest rate is extremely high. Let me say 40%. That, that, that is too much. It will discourage you actually from borrowing that money and they start up small business which will have created jobs to people. So, but if the interest rate is very low, uh, let me say 5%, then many people will be attracted to, to borrow money in order to start up a small business. And when the more people start business, the more jobs will be created to people. That's how interest rates affect uh, the demand for the labor. Their access to the capital. You no, know, capital is what you need to start up a business. It could be land, it could be even the finance itself, it could also be uh, manpower, etc. So where there is no capital, definitely no organization start up from there. And when the organization is not starting up, uh, definitely there is no demand for labor because you cannot demand for a labor when there is no, no, no job. There is no organization which is offering for you the job. So that is how lack of capital uh, determines the demand for, for, for labor. So favorable financial conditions can stimulate investment, business expansion, and labor demand. So if the interest is very, very low, more investors will be attracted uh, in borrowing the money so that they will invest their money and create more jobs. So financial constraints such as credit tightening or reduced investor confidence may limit firms' capacity to expand and hire Worker. So basically, that is how uh, financial factors affect uh, demand for labor in an organization or industry. So that's what I had prepared for you in this presentation. We shall have more discussion on the other topics related to the labor economics. Thank you so much for watching.